Hey guys, this is Filter Strain. I wanted to take you through a test shoot that I shot yesterday of some boots, but before I do that, I wanted to talk about why I'm working on a test shoot and what my overall goal is with it. I wanted to get about 20 or so images of boots in a very, very similar style and similar lighting so I can weed them down to about 8 to 12 images and put together a promo to send out to ad agencies or anyone else that I thought might want to hire me. Earlier this week, I was potentially going to get a portrait shoot, but that ended up not materializing. So what I did is I took the setup for the test shoot I was going to do for the portrait, and I shrunk it down to shoot the shoes. Uh, first and foremost, this right here is just a stand-in camera. The camera that I ended up using for the shoot was the camera that I'm doing the video on. I ended up using this lens right here, which is a 60 millimeter macro. I focus stack the image so you can see some masking tape on here where I marked the beginning and end focus and then marked a few spots in the center so I could focus uh, as I went along. I shot about five images, focus stacked them together in, in Helicon Focus and then retouched it from there. Uh, if you look above you'll see that I've got a beauty dish. On the beauty dish I've got a grid to kind of constrain the light in a very small area around the main shoe that I'm trying to focus on and I've also got a polarizing gel so that I can cut off the highlight that was on the tip of the shoe or at least control it and dial it down a little bit. Besides that I've got a light in the very background with a grid on it uh, or a snoot with a grid on it to rim light the back heel of the shoe. And I've also got another light that's bouncing off the ceiling and acting as a general fill. One of the other things that I wanted to practice with was sort of the mobility of my setup. Um, I recently, semi-recently, bought a used uh, Vagabond 2 uh, battery converter. It takes a 12-volt battery and converts it into electricity that we can use. I can use with the Einstein units. I ended up running all three lights off the one battery pack. Um, it worked pretty good. Towards the end of the battery, it started kind of, kind of dragging just a little bit. I did have it on slow mode, which um, might have prevented it from cycling as fast as it could, but it only took about two or three seconds, and since I'm usually taking a shot, moving something around or adjusting something and then taking a shot for most of the time, and then towards the end, focus stacking, I just focus, let everything kind of settle. If I've moved everything, take another shot, focus do it again, do it again, do it again, to get my five focus stack shots. So it really wasn't that big of a problem for it to take a little bit of time to recycle. I thought it worked really great. So obviously I've got one light that's acting as a field that's bouncing off the ceiling. Uh, it's just a white ceiling, not much to see there. This right here is the pan head that I use as well as the grid that's in front of it. I also have a piece of polarizing gel taped to a piece of foam core. The piece of polarizing gels come uh, 17 inches wide and I think 20 or 21 inches long. This is an 18 inch pan head so I was able to cut it in such a way that I only lost about a half an inch on the 17 inch side and it fits really nicely on the pan head itself. I stuffed the sh uh, main shoe with a lot of cloth to kind of remove any wrinkles along the side of the shoe as well as the tongue. And the foreground shoe is just off the surface that I'm shooting on, so I've got it uh, propped up with a couple pieces of foam core as well. This background light is just a snoot. I also had a little grid on it to kind of really constrain the light along the back edge of the shoe and avoid an extra secondary shadow on the front edge of the shoe. So this is the old Vagabond that I bought online. I think I got this unit um, with a defunct crappy battery for $35 after shipping. Since then I've gotten a new battery that I think I spent about $50 on on Amazon so I think I'm about all in $80 to $85. Uh, I've got it hooked up to a simple surge protector and all three lights that I used for this setup. There's a, a slow-mo which is what I'm did for this shoot and there's a fast mode which I'm really not sure what the difference is but I'm assuming that this fast mode would allow it to cycle through the uh, cycle the lights a little bit faster than what I did. It uh, charges up just you charges the battery up just using a regular plug but the cool thing is is that you can buy some little alligator clips and um, hook it up to a car battery so if I ever traveled I could just take the 
uh, power converter itself and take these clips and buy a battery for, you know, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, wherever town I ended up being in, and run probably all day. Uh, I actually got this idea from Joel Grimes. Um, it's a little bit old school, but it worked really, really well, and I'm really pretty excited about it. I hope this gave you a good idea of how I did this particular shoot. Moving forward with the rest of the 20 images that I plan on shooting in this series, I hope to do some location shoots, which the Vagabond will come in really handy doing those. Obviously in those shoots I won't need the fill light that I have bouncing off the ceiling, and I may or may not use the rim light that I'm using in the background. The main light I plan on using is the one with the pan head, with the grid, and the polarizing gel. Thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, in the future, I'm hoping I can show you some of the location shoots as well as some of the other studio shoots as I progress through this project. Again, thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye.